pain has reached epidemic proportions in America. I'm Dr. Paul Christo. This is Aches and Gains. Dr. Paul Christo is one of America's leading experts on relieving pain. He's board certified, Harvard trained, and a pain medicine specialist at Johns Hopkins. U.S. News and World Report ranks him as a top doctor and among the top 1% in the nation for pain management. Becker's Review selected him as one of the 70 best pain management physicians in America. He's listed as a super doctor for the Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Northern Virginia area. Aches and Gains is a weekly talk show covering all aspects of pain and pain relief. The human impact is real. Older adults, children, and even infants struggle to cope with pain. But there's hope. And there are treatments that can ease pain and suffering. The show offers compelling stories about people who found relief. We share cutting-edge treatments from contributing experts, and we offer ways to help people cope with their pain. Welcome to the show. When humans are in pain, they feel it, express it, deal with it, or even try to ignore it and hope it goes away. Animals, on the other hand, are less direct with their ability to communicate their pain. At times, it's obvious, but often it's difficult to actually know how they're feeling and where they're in distress. They've evolved to hide pain or weakness as long as possible to avoid being targeted by predators. Today, we step away from human pain and examine animal pain. The similarities may astound you. We'll get an in-depth look at thoroughbred racehorses. Targeting injury and pain and then treating them quickly and effectively are critical. But how is this done? Do trainers have a remarkable gift for understanding horses? Can they communicate with them uniquely? as depicted in the 1998 American film directed by and starring Robert Redford called The Horse Whisperer. Award-winning thoroughbred horse trainer John Service and veterinarian Dr. Art Stitzer give us a privileged view of identifying and treating pain in these beautiful animals. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, Mylan Pharmaceuticals, Purdue Pharma, Endo Pharmaceuticals, Horizon Pharma, Pentec Health, Boston Scientific, and Optimal Pain Control. For live online listening to Aches and Gains, please go to paulchristomd.com. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. If you have any questions or comments for Dr. Christo, please email him at achesandgains at gmail.com. John Service is a champion thoroughbred horse trainer. He's won over a thousand thoroughbred horse races and is a multiple grade one stakes winning trainer. In fact, he trained Smarty Jones, the 2004 winner of both the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. He's here to tell us how he keeps these powerful animals fit, identifies their vulnerabilities, and recognizes their painful injuries. John, welcome to Aches and Gains. Thank you, Paul. Uh, tell us about Smarty Jones, the 2004 winner of both the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. Well, he came to me early on as a young two-year-old, um, and my responsibility from that point is to, to teach him how to run, to teach him how to break from the gate, and to gradually teach him to be competitive and, uh, and be, you know, be a racehorse. Uh, John, what separates uh, Smarty Jones from, from the rest of the pack? You start working him out, and they start to get up to about a half of a mile working out or five-eighths of a mile working out, and they'll start to separate themselves. And then you then you get an idea, but you really don't know if you have a quality horse until you start racing. What's the most vulnerable part of a thoroughbred horse's body? Definitely the front legs. Um, I would say probably the most vulnerable are the knees. John, are these horses prone to ligament or tendon injury or, or muscle pain like human professional athletes? I don't know if it's necessarily ligament. Um, I would say more bone chips, uh, cartilage damage, that type of thing. How about muscle pain? You know, when you have a horse coming off a layoff and he hasn't done much for a while, and you start training, they're just like us. They'll, they'll stiffen up in their muscles, and, and, you know, we might use, like, a muscle relaxer for a few days just to get them through that, um, but it usually doesn't last long. Tell us, then, what kind of pain thoroughbred horses are most susceptible to? Definitely arthritis. You know, the longer they race, that definitely becomes an issue. And where? Um, ankles and knees, mostly ankles. And then they'll get some back pain periodically because of breaking out of the gate. They might pull a muscle in their back or up high in their in their uh, hind ends, and, and you'll have to do some stuff to get through that. The Horse Whisperer was the 1998 film that was directed by and starred Robert Redford. He played a talented trainer with a remarkable gift for understanding horses. John, is there a special communication between you and the horse? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say a communication other than the visual communication. 
Um, you know, I mean, we, I, they know us because we give them peppermints in the morning, and they, you know, when they see you walk in the barn, they're just like a dog. They get excited. Um, they get excited at feed time because they know they're getting fed. But the communication from the trainer's point of view is watching their horse train every day, knowing their gait, knowing what they look like on the racetrack. And if that changes, then usually you have something you need to address. Mm -hmm. And how can you tell if a horse is in pain? You know, if they they have that dull, unhappy look to them. Um, If it's a colic situation or something like that, when they're in the stall, they get very uncomfortable. They'll start digging, lay down and roll, that kind of thing, uh, or even break out into a sweat. Um, We check their legs every day, check for heat. If there's heat in their knees or their ankles or their shins or their feet, we'll bring them out on the blacktop and jog them up and down the blacktop to make sure they're jogging good. Like us, horses are all individuals. I mean, do they display pain in different ways? We have what we call pointing, where a horse will point one leg or the other because he's got some pain in that leg. He's just trying to take the weight off of that leg. And if you see that, then you know right away, you know, this horse doesn't do this. He's pointing that leg. Something's not right. Let's let's get him out. Let's get a look at him. Go over the top to bottom, and uh, and try to find out what it is. Is it dangerous to be around horses when they're in pain? I mean, do they become grouchy or, or violent, or do they do the reverse and seek comfort from from humans? They actually they do. They seek out comfort from people. The only chance I think really is when a horse is colicky, and when they get that stomach pain, it's so hard for them to handle that that they have a tendency, they want to try to get down and roll to try to get rid of that gas in their stomach. And I've had horses literally where we've been trying to, you know, pump them with electrolyte jugs to keep some, to keep some fluids in them and have them just hit the ground. I mean, just go down. And if you're working on them, you have to really watch that because you do not want to be under them when they go down, for sure. Most of the time when people get hurt, it's usually because the horse is really afraid. And people make the mistake if a horse gets hung up on something or something like that, and, they, and, they're, and they're scared because they can't get off, and people go in to help them, you re- that's when you really need to be cautious. Because I understand you're trying to help the horse, but you have to remember this horse is horrified, and he's, not, he's, he's looking to protect himself. He's not worried about anything else. When we come back from the break, we'll talk to John about whether horses ever pretend they're in pain. I'm Dr. Paul Christo, and you're listening to Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, the global leader in medical technology, alleviating pain, restoring health, and extending life for millions of people around the world. Mylan Pharmaceuticals, one of the world's leading generic pharmaceutical companies. Discover why at Mylan, quality isn't just a claim, it's a cause we've made personal at seeinsidemylan.com. Purdue Pharma, making a positive impact on healthcare and on lives, reminding everyone to safeguard medications in their home. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Service, champion thoroughbred horse trainer. John, you know, he, people rarely, but, but sometimes pretend that they're in pain. Do horses ever do this? No, but I will tell you, I have horses, just like humans, that exaggerate quite a bit. You know, you'll have horses that have problems. You, you put the saddle on them, and they know they're going to the racetrack. They don't even think of those problems. Or they'll go out, and just like a veteran football player, they'll go out, a little arthritic, they'll warm right out of it, and they'll go and do their thing. Yeah. Why on earth would, uh, would horses exaggerate their pain? I think it's probably got to do with the pedigree. You know, when Smarty Jones was two, he had a very serious, almost tragic accident uh, while at the gate. What happened? He actually was schooling at the gate, and he was standing in there, and for no reason at all, he just exploded. He leaped straight up into the gate and hit his head on the metal bar and fractured his eye socket. We backed him out of the gate. Um, we walked him back to the barn. He was bleeding profusely from both nostrils. Uh, we, we packed his head in ice as best we could, medicated him, and within two hours, he was on his way to the clinic. That sounds frightening for the horse and for you. Uh, John, what did you give him for pain? Um, we gave him some, some uh, banamine, just a painkiller. We gave him butazolidin, which is an anti-inflammatory. She probably gave him a little tranquilizer just to try to settle him. You know, John, you obviously have a close bond with horses, and especially with Smarty Jones. What was the emotional impact of this on you? Well, I mean, it was it was gut-wrenching. 
because he's a horse that, that had shown some serious ability. I didn't know how much damage at the time had been done. I know it looked really, really, really bad because it swelled up really fast. I didn't know if he was going to live through it. I didn't know if he was going to lose an eye. And it was for new clients. The Chapmans, I had never trained for them before. It was the first horse that I'd ever had for them. Yeah, they have a horse that they that they think is a pretty exciting individual and, and has a lot of talent. And then to have to pick up the phone and call him and say, listen, your horse got hurt really bad. And, you know, I don't know how bad, but he's at the clinic and it's not good. I can tell you that. This all actually happened before Smarty Jones won both the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness in 2004. John, what eventually happened to Smarty? They saw what damages were done. There really wasn't anything they could do surgery-wise. He had cracked that orbital socket, but they weren't in an area that needed to come out. It didn't affect the eye at all, thank God. And I think more than anything, they just they just kept him comfortable medication wise and kept him full of fluids so he didn't dehydrate and got him through it. Wow, that's great to hear. John, are painkillers things like morphine used to treat pain in horses? No, uh, you know we're not allowed to use any of that stuff. We use nerve blocks pretty effectively to treat pain. Are they used in horses? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We do a lot of those for diagnostic reasons. Time can become very costly. So a lot of times we'll go over them real quick, top to bottom. If we can't find anything right away, then we'll start blocking them diagnostically for, and we'll start at the foot and we'll block the foot. And if you get, if you get to the knee and they haven't got any better, then you know, one of two things, you either have a muscular problem or if you have a major problem like a shoulder or something like that. And usually when that's the case, then we'll send them off for uh, for a nuclear scan and do the uh, do the body scan where they pick up the heat and try to show exactly what where that point is and then and then X-ray that. John, what's the worst pain imaginable that a horse can experience? Probably colic. The number one euthanasia uh, reason for thoroughbreds is probably colic. It's very hard on them. It's hard to correct, and that pain. They just can't handle that, and they start throwing themselves down on the ground, rolling around. Their their intestines actually spin. They'll get what we call twisted gut, and then then they'll have to go in there and actually just open them up, go in there and correct it, and usually have to take out you know whatever part of that intestine that have died because that happens pretty quick. It's similar to human visceral pain, that is pain due to organs, which can be extremely extremely painful. Before we close, John, can you bring us up to date on Smarty Jones? Smarty Jones is standing in Pennsylvania. Um, his offspring has been successful. He has not had what we call that breakout horse, which really keeps him from being a top shelf stallion. But he's been very successful. Fantastic. John, thank you so much for joining us today on Aches and Gains. Okay, Paul, thank you. When we come back, we'll talk to Dr. Art Stitzer, veterinarian for Thoroughbred Horses. I'm Dr. Paul Christo, and you're listening to Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Endo Pharmaceuticals, a U.S.-based specialty healthcare solutions company that delivers innovative diagnostics, drugs, devices, and clinical data to meet the needs of patients in areas such as pain, urology, oncology, and endocrinology. Horizon Pharma, a biopharmaceutical company that develops and commercializes innovative medicines to target unmet therapeutic needs in arthritis, pain, and inflammatory diseases. Pentech Health, one of the nation's largest pharmacy and nursing companies dedicated solely to providing in-home care for patients with implanted pumps used for the treatment of severe pain or spasticity. Welcome back. Dr. Art Stitzer is a veterinarian specializing in equine sports medicine. He's devoted entirely to maintaining the health of thoroughbred racehorses and then treating them when in distress or discomfort. Dr. Stitzer, welcome to Aches and Gains. Thank you for having me. We just heard about Smarty Jones, the 2004 winner of both the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness. I'm wondering, are thoroughbred horses prone to injury and pain? Perhaps they're more prone to injury just due to their size and the speed at which they travel, therefore the stresses on their bones and ligaments. Even the most experienced horse trainers, it seems, can have difficulty identifying when a horse is in pain. How do horses manifest pain? Just like any group of people, dogs, horses, goldfish, <laughs> they, you know, everyone's different. Uh, you know, the horse that has a fracture standing there with his leg off the ground or even a simple foot abscess will stand there with a leg off the ground that's obvious. Some horses, 
don't show you much, and you have to look for signs like inflammation in the joint, uh, heat, swelling, to actual horses that jog lame. Art, how does jogging with them help diagnose the problem? Well, when you're jogging them, say, on the front leg, when the horse is lame, his head will go down on the leg that's sound or good, and his head will come up, get the weight off the leg on the leg that's sore. We know that in humans... Chronic pain can lead to depression, anxiety, withdrawal, I mean, a lot of emotional upheaval. Does that occur in horses? I do think that horses that are chronically sore, you know, they'll, they'll back out of their feed tub and not eat as well. They don't look quite as bright in the eye. You know, when they're jogging down the shed row, instead of bucking and kicking, they'll just kind of do it quietly. Like us, do you feel that each horse responds to pain differently? I've had horses that I've radiographed, you know, for just simple reasons, like that was carrying some heat and the trainer didn't like it. And I've found the horse had several bone fragments in his knee. And that horse has always been sound, never been sore and very happy and won many races. I've had other horses and you'll see just a tiny little spur in their knee and that horse will stay lame and, you know, be cranky and not run and not you know, not want to perform. So I think some just tolerate it better than others. I would think that horses would be susceptible to musculoskeletal pain. Are, are they? They do get back pain. It's a little harder just because of the mass of a horse to get a good feel for how much back pain they have. Sometimes a horse after training, their muscles will get so tight that they call it tying up and the horse actually has problems walking. And sometimes it can be in just one leg. More often it's all over to the point where when you see the horse walk, it looks like it's taking three inch strides instead of two foot strides. And they will sweat and become quite painful, which is, you know, and if it goes untreated, they can actually, it can turn into a colic in a bad situation. It almost seems like they're immobilized at that point from continual muscle spasm. What do you do to break it? Mainly you treat them with anti-inflammatories such as uh, bute which, and banamine, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like aspirin, Tylenol. Um, You can also treat them with corticosteroids and you sedate them. Our previous guest, John Service, mentioned that colic is one of the most painful experiences for a horse. Why does that occur? And is there anything else that's extremely painful for thoroughbred horses? There's many different reasons for it. They can have a gas colic, an impaction. The horse's GI tract is a nightmare the way it evolved. There's many turns, many narrowings. You know, and then, of course, a fracture is very painful. But believe it or not, they, they seem to tolerate that more than, than an actual colic. What are some of the common problems that cause discomfort in, in a horse's leg? An abscess in their hoof, and that can occur in any of the four legs. Some bacteria get seeded, it steps on a rock or has a, you know, a problem with the hoof wall. And they will form an abscess, which is very painful. If you've ever had any kind of blister under your fingernail, you'll kind of, you know, it gives you a sense of how painful it is. And then they're standing on it. But it's simple to fix. You simply soak the horse's foot in hot water, you know, and you pack them up in some osmotic agent that will actually draw from the hoof wall. And, uh, and eventually the abscess pops. You know, I've heard that there are equine chiropractors. Yes, there are. There's quite a few of them, and there's equine acupuncture also. Let's talk about the equine chiropractors first. When do you send a thoroughbred horse to a chiropractor, and what do they do? Usually, I recommend the chiropractors with the small chronic back pain where the horse is sore when they put the rider up on the horse or you push on the horse. And they actually stand on bales of straw and get up on above the horse's back and manipulate the horse's back. I have to admit, in the beginning, I was skeptical how they're actually going to do this just because of the sheer muscle mass of the horse. But you can actually hear them crack the horse's back, yes. <laughs> Wow, and have you seen positive results? Not with every horse, but with some horses. But back and neck pain, because they will also crack their neck. But I I have to admit, I am amazed at how well they tolerate it. And they, they do seem relaxed when they're being worked on that way. Let's switch to acupuncture. I mean, some people swear by acupuncture for horses. I usually use it most in, the, in similar situations, you know, chronic back pain. But yes, they pull out the needles and place them in the horse and some people inject a little bit of vitamin or or some kind of you know anti-inflammatory and uh and the horses again they tolerate it very well and the acupuncturists they use pretty small skinny needles uh the one long needle down towards the hips is probably about three inches long 
The other needles are, I would say, an inch and a half to two inches long, but they are rather thin. Uh, you know, I, I, more often than not, I, I do see some relief for the horse. There's massage specialists for the horses also, and the horses stand perfectly for that, just like anyone in a spa, to be honest with you, and do seem more relaxed at the end of it. You've also talked about the value of injecting steroids along with something called hyaluronic acid into the joints of horses for pain relief, and then also the value of using opioids for acute pain relief. And I'm wondering, how do you know when a horse's pain is relieved? He stops sweating, he stops pawing, he stops, you know, rearing up, his heart rate goes down. Usually when they're in pain, their heart rate will go up to, you know, say 60 or 100 beats a minute. Well, a comfortable resting racehorse, his heart rate will be about 36 beats a minute. I know that you use digital nerve blocks to help reduce extreme hoof pain in horses. Under what specific conditions, though, do you use these blocks? You know, if they have an abscess in one leg and it, it's not bursting, you know, for an extended length of time, they'll spend so much time standing on the other leg, they can actually founder where the bone tears away from the hoof wall. And that's also a critical life and death type of situation for a horse. And extremely painful, no doubt. Uh, Art, what's unique about treating thoroughbred horse injuries and pain compared to other animals? The bone chips, the tears and tendons. I don't think you see as much of that in other animals. The backyard dog, he may tear his cruciate ligament and his stifle running, but, you know, his career is still safe as your backyard dog. <laughs> Whereas the racing thoroughbred, when he... You know, if it has a tear in one of his digital tendons, you know, in the front leg, you know, his racing career, while he may come back, is most likely done. Art, if a horse is experiencing pain, do other horses or animals move toward the horse as a gesture of comfort? When the horse is in pain, the other horses do all acknowledge, they, they will all put their heads out and watch. You know, if a horse is colicking at an odd hour, they to mainly stop and put their head out to see what's happening, yeah. Also, can horses sense an area of pain in humans? You know, with somebody that is more elderly or, or very young children, I can take the most rambunctious racehorse and you put a toddler in front of it and it will sniff it with curiosity and be very gentle while it pets it. And, I mean, I've many racehorses where you can actually put the child on its back and it will behave. So I think they probably do recognize some pain also. Yeah, that's another good example of the interconnectedness between humans and other animals. Art, what's the reason that thoroughbred horses would have to be euthanized for pain? Only in the case of colic, I would say. I do have to euthanize some for racing injuries. If they have an open fracture where the bone actually comes through the skin, those horses are pretty prone to infection. And even if you go ahead and screw the bone back together, the infection will be too much for the horse. How do you actually euthanize the horse? Uh, you overdose it on barbiturates. So they basically just fall asleep and drop. Before we close, are there exciting new developments for the treatment of pain in horses? Uh, stem cells seem to be the new the new treatment as far as, you know, chronic joint pain goes. I've actually used stem cells in some horses with minor fractures and with varying degrees of success on a return to racing. It, it is costly, though, so it's not... You know, at this stage of the game, I'd say there's still a lot of work to be done. Art, do you inject the stem cells into the joint or intra-articularly? Uh, intra-articular. And where are they coming from? From other horses. And many wouldn't realize that stem cell therapy is being used in animals as well as humans. Dr. Art Stitzer, I want to thank you so much for joining us today on Aches and Gains. <laughs> thank you for having me. Tune in next time when we explore another interesting topic on Aches and Gains. Aches and Gains is supported by Medtronic, Mylan Pharmaceuticals, Purdue Pharma, Endo Pharmaceuticals, Horizon Pharma, Pentec Health, Boston Scientific, and Optimal Pain Control. For live online listening to Aches and Gains, please go to paulchristomd.com. The views and opinions expressed in this radio program are solely the views of Dr. Paul Christo and do not necessarily express the views of this radio station and Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, nor an endorsement by any or all of them of any of its content. This show provides medical information, not advice. Please consult your personal physician before engaging in any course of treatment or use of any of the techniques or products discussed on this show. Discussion of particular uses of products on this show have not been approved by any of the manufacturers of such products. To access podcasts of the show, please go to paulchristomd.com. That's paulchristomd.com. Aches and Gains is produced by Tom Blair and Ty Ford. Elsa Langford is the technical consultant and engineer. 
Dr. Paul Christo is the executive producer. Thanks for listening. This is Aches and Gains with Dr. Paul Christo.